Hey guys, I'm Wendy from Sticky Lore. Today I'm going to be showing you what I've been growing. Um, I kept seeing videos with people growing vegetables upside down, um, even in like two liter bottles. So um, I decided to give it a try. actually a good day to show you this because I've got some plants that are in various stages of development and I'm also getting ready to repot some of the seedlings that I have. Uh, most of these plants I started from seed with the exception of these two tomato plants which my oldest daughter gave me from one of the local farms here. Most of these I started in little pods which I'll show you in another video but once they get to a certain size then I'll go ahead and transfer them to some kind of little container like this. Most of my containers are just the bottoms of like fast food cups that I've cut um, and then I've made sure to poke holes in the bottom of them for drainage. Um, when I first started, I did learn the hard way and I was using soil from the yard and I found out that it does not drain well at all. I thought I was being thrifty, but you absolutely do need a good soil. So um, let me show you the soil that I'm using right now. Okay, so here's the potting mix that I'm using and I don't know if it makes that much of a difference as long as it is um, loose and it drains well. I did specifically look for a soil that showed or mentioned that vegetables grew well in it and this seems to be doing fine for me. I'm gonna go down the line and tell you about each one but um, before we start I did want to tell you that um, like I mentioned earlier they're in various stages of development and that is true for even seedlings or seeds that I started on the exact same day. I have some that thrived and some that are doing okay and then some that just didn't make it. And um, I can show you reasons that I've found that have contributed to maybe like the success or failure of the particular seeds and um, so that maybe you can avoid those mistakes also. Tomorrow I'm gonna show you the process of taking the little plants and putting them upside down into the two liter bottles, how you do that and keep them from falling out. I did see that in another video and I'm going to put the links to those videos in my description box so that you can see where I got the idea from. But um, this particular one is a cucumber plant and this is a really good example of the different stages of development of the cucumber plant in relation to you growing it upside down. Um, this one is doing well and it's it's kind of cool to see all the roots, the root system in this bottle. So this one has um, some little flowers. They usually like to bloom in the mornings and then they'll close up as the day goes by. Um, it's growing some little tendrils on it, little spirally things that attach. Okay, but you can, you can see that the uh, stem here has gotten real nice and thick. And the stems will curve toward the sun if you're growing them somewhere where it's partially shaded or um, not in full sun. It's going to adjust itself so that it can get more sun. This is a little cucumber plant that's not doing as well, even though the seeds were started on the exact same day. And I think it's because a mistake that I made in transferring it too soon, when it was too little. Um, I got really excited and I, I wanted to hurry up and get all the little plants upside down in bottles because it looks really cool and um, I wanted them to go ahead and start getting used to being in the bottles. Um, so when a couple of them, a couple of the cucumber plants that were growing were actually big enough, like the one that I just showed you that was that's doing well. Once they had gotten big enough, I went ahead and transferred all the little cucumber plants that I had. And that was a mistake. I needed to let the other ones get a little bit bigger because this is what happens when you transfer it too soon, or one of the things that could happen is that um, when you start watering the bottle, uh, the, the soil comes out a little bit at the bottom and if the roots haven't taken hold very well, if, if the plant's just too tiny, 
it wants to try to fall out. And this one kept inching further and further out of the bottle until it just, it wasn't looking very well. After a while, this one just looked like it wasn't doing well at all. It had just moved so far down in the neck of the bottle that I didn't feel the roots were in there good. And you, and you can tell that uh, it's not anywhere near the size of the one that's doing well. Nice and lush, and I'll put another picture of that here in comparison um, with flowers on it. Um, this is the exact same day, same little group of seeds. Um, so what I did with this one is I turned it upside down until it establishes itself a little bit better um, to try to save this one. And it, it's actually doing better than it was when I first did this just two days ago. And I'm just watering it from the top and to make sure that the soil doesn't come out, I've got another bucket under here to hold the soil. And I put some water in that soil also so that it can maybe suck it up from the bottom if it needs to. And um, I think I'm gonna be able to save this one. Here's an example of a cucumber plant from the same group of seeds. And as you can see, there's nothing here. This one died. Um, I tried to nurse it back to shape before I thought it might be a good idea to turn it upside down like I did with the other one. And I, I thought that if I just nursed it a little bit, it might revive itself, but it just never did make it. And I had to just um, get rid of it. I, I just took it. When I do ha find plants that have died, um, I usually put them in my watermelon and pumpkin flower bed, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But I'm saving this bottle for my other cucumber plant, and I'll show you that. So here's another cucumber plant from the same group of seeds. Um, this one I left in the first container after I took it out of the pod longer because it was really obvious at the time, this was the smallest one, that it wasn't going to make it if I turned it upside down. So, um, and over time, when I saw that the ones that were very small were not doing well, I decided not to transfer this one. So. Um, as you can see, it's getting a lot thicker now. It has a lot more um, growth on it, and this would do very well turned upside down, which is what I'm going to be showing you in the next video. My zucchini plants have been the most fun to watch grow because they took off, have gotten really nice and lush, and have had all kinds of blooms on them. Um, I did panic at first when I started seeing flowers because the first group of flowers that I saw all along my zucchini plants started falling off. So I'm, this is a learning process for me. I went online and I started looking up what could be causing my flowers to fall off my zucchini plants and I found out that the first group of flowers are the ones that fall off normally, like naturally. Um, they're usually all male and they will attract the bees and then uh, the next group Sorry guys, it's a little bit loud around here. Um, there's some traffic, so when it gets really loud, we'll just um, cut that out and I'll... So anyway, I found out that um, the first flowers on a zucchini plant naturally fall off. Uh, most of them are male. They're almost always all male. And then they bloom and attract the bees to your plant so that when the next set of blooms opens, which are usually a mix of male and female. The bees have already been attracted to your plant um, because the blooms only open for one day and you have to have a male and a female flower open at the same time for the bees to pollinate and for you to get fruit. As we walk along, you might notice some um, dried leaves and some pieces that might need to be pruned off, but I'm gonna leave those on on purpose for my video tomorrow where I'm gonna show you how I prune and how I transfer my plants and we're going to have a whole how to do video tomorrow. I'm just showing you what's happened so far because I actually wasn't sure I'd be making this video. I wasn't sure it was going to work, but um, I'm having some success, some success and failures, but mostly success and it's been a lot of fun. So hopefully we're, we're going to see some vegetables soon. So these two are zucchinis. These are the two little tomato plants that I showed you earlier. Right here you can see I have three little baby tomatoes growing, so cute.
these got so long and I didn't see any kind of flowers on them or blooms even that I thought that they were just going to be a failure that maybe the conditions weren't right for them and then all of a sudden they started making little baby tomatoes so that's exciting here's another zucchini plant here this one is a cucumber this cucumber plant has some little flowers on it little tendrils Here's another zucchini plant. And you can see that, let's see. Okay, this is actually the cucumber plant from next door hooking onto this string here. And this is a good opportunity to show you that when um, some of these zucchini plants got so big so fast that um, it just looked like there was a big bouquet of flowers and that it might be straining the stem because they all feed off of one main stem here coming out of the bottle. So I got worried that there was too much weight and I put up some extra string for it to kind of hang against. You can see that right here. Um, I didn't tie these off or anything. I just wrapped them around so that I can adjust them if I need to. Okay, this one is a jalapeno pepper plant also a jalapeno pepper and this was the cucumber plant that I showed you earlier jalapeno pepper jalapeno pepper here's a zucchini from the same set of seeds jalapeno peppers zucchini jalapeno pepper jalapeno pepper and jalapeno pepper. I have a bunch of the jalapenos because I started them before I did some of the other peppers, but tomorrow when I show you how to transfer from the little pots into the bottles upside down, I have some different types of peppers that I'm going to show you that I started that are kind of sitting along the railing here. Um, I specifically looked for ways to grow in containers um, and in small spaces, even though we have a yard here that I could be growing in because um, I found out after the fact actually that the soil here is bad so I wouldn't have been able to grow in it anyway, not very well. And I actually have an example of that um, because I tried it anyway <laughs> with something, but um, I also wanted it to be portable in case um, for whatever reason we had to take our food with us because um, it is 2020 and um, I just want to be prepared. While we're up here on the porch, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you these little apples, the apple trees that I've started growing. Um, these were from store-bought apples and um, I did do a stratification process with that where I put them in the refrigerator for a while and I'll tell you about that tomorrow. I'll show you that process because I actually have some seeds right now, some apple seeds um, that are in the refrigerator and they've just started sprouting so I can show you that process on how to stratify and get them ready for little pots. And in this little container I have strawberry seeds from a strawberry plant that I have that I'll show you and um, I actually stratified these also in the freezer and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, this is the first time I've tried these so I'm not really sure how successful I'm going to be with it but um, I don't know if you can probably won't be able to see but um, I'll try to take a picture and uh, insert it here of what it looks like today. I am starting to see just the tiniest bits of green with um, some sprouting from strawberry seeds. When I first started experimenting with growing things from seeds, um, one of the first things that I tried were lentils just because they were in my kitchen and um, I thought I wonder if these would sprout and I put them in a pod and they did start sprouting so then I tried to get them planted really fast. Um, originally I did have them in a bottle where we had poked holes in it and thread each of these little uh, plants through and it looked like it was doing okay but every time a branch would snap from the wind um, it would die so I put them all into another container and they've just they've just 
not, they've not done very well. Um, I need to do some more research on how to do lentils, but um, it's definitely something that I want to grow. Um, not just lentils, but other beans and specifically soybeans, chickpea type things that have a lot of protein in them. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna let you take a look at these little, oh wait, hold on, these, this, one, this one's already opened, dang. I do have two little places that made pods. Uh, this one looks like it's already opened and the lentil probably fell out. This one still has one on it. Let's take a look inside of that. Can you, can you see it? Oh, so look, we did get one little baby lentil out of it. Lentil Harvest 2020. This is an example of what you can do if you don't have little cups that you can use for containers. Um, if you need to get your seeds separated in a hurry or have some place for them to get some growth on them before you transfer them to something bigger. Um, I did notice that peppers in general have really spidery thin um, root systems and they tend to get tangled together if they're planted in the same container so you want to kind of get them separated as soon as possible um, so what i did was um, for this particular for these bell pepper seeds i put them in little toilet paper tubes with some soil and then put the soil down in a bigger container of soil and um, i can just water the bottom and it soaks it up through the um, underneath of the tubes and then when I get ready to plant them, I can just peel off the toilet paper too. But um, they're also biodegradable, so if you wanted to, you could plant the whole thing down in the uh, ground and that would just um, degrade after a while. Um, as you can see, this one's coming apart already. It's starting to dissolve. Okay, these two are my potato bags. Um, I used grocery store bags that you can get for like a dollar or two at your local grocery store, the reusable kind and cut holes in the bottom of them. Um, if you've ever grown potatoes or watched videos on how to grow potatoes, you know that you start them with just about four or five inches of soil um, with a potato in the soil. And then once they reach a certain height, you add some more soil to it and you keep doing that until it reaches the top of your container. I've actually cut these off a couple of different times because they were getting so, so big um, and just left them in the soil here and just keep them nicely watered. Um, these are going to be ready anywhere between July 19th and September 6th according to Google. So um, I think I'm going to leave them in as long as possible and then we'll do um, a harvest and I'll show you that on video. This one just has two regular potatoes. This one has a regular potato and a sweet potato. Um, which is actually, I left the sweet potato vine alone instead of cutting it like I did with the regular potatoes because it gets really viney and it's pretty and I just let it kind of go up um, along the stairs here. And this is my kale plant. Um, actually, I didn't think we'd have any kale. The little tiny um, caterpillars got to it and ate it so bad it just looked like little skeleton leaves and I put it away from all the other plants so that it wouldn't get on them and start eating those also and um, I didn't think it was gonna make it I thought it was just done for and then it started coming back so now I just check it every now and then to make sure that there aren't any little caterpillars eating it away and so far so good so I think we're gonna actually be able to make a little salad with that this year um, this is where the caterpillars went, apparently. Um, these are my radishes. They're going to be ready in, um, well, they could be ready now. So actually from July 9th through July 23rd is when they're supposed to be ready. So I'm going to try to let them go till the end. Um, but as you can see, there are holes all over these leaves on this side. Uh, this morning I got out here and tried to find all the little caterpillars and just pick them off and throw them into the grass to get them off because um, I don't know if they would affect the radishes since they're underground. I don't really know that much about it yet. I'm still learning, but um, I don't want them to um, make this be like a little skeleton plant like the kale did. 
So um, when I do harvest these, I'll, I'll show you that also. This is a good opportunity to talk about plastic. If you're going to grow in plastic, you have to make sure that it has the right number on it. Um, there are certain plastics that are not safe to grow food in, but um, I'm going to put a little link to some information about that. Um, this is a number five bucket. Okay, here is a strawberry plant that also came from the same farm as the tomato plants. Um, this one I put in this container when it got a little bigger and I was watering it and putting it in the sunshine and uh, for a little while it seemed like it was doing okay. It actually grew a couple of strawberries right off the bat, but then um, once the strawberries um, got a little bit of um, size on them, it, they started dying and the plant looked like it was not going to make it. And then I realized that I had the type of pot that has a bottom on it that needs to snap off. <laughs> so um, I had no idea that it was a piece that needed to be taken off. I didn't even check the bottom. I just assumed that it, because it was a flower pot that it had the right drainage on it, which it does, but not if it has that little piece on the bottom. So once I snapped it off um, and let it dry out a little bit, it started coming back and um, I think I'm going to be able to save this plant, but please make sure that your pots, whatever uh, you're growing in, has good drainage in the bottom. Okay, this is one of my splurges this year was to get a pool, a little kiddie pool to plant in and I've got my pumpkins and watermelons in here. Um, I'll tell you more about that in a different video. I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of everything today, but um, I did want to tell you that I'm going to insert a picture here because the blooms in the morning are really pretty, but they are only open for a little while and they'll close up. But the bigger blooms that you see here are from the pumpkins, and then the watermelons make smaller little uh, lighter yellow blooms. But I'll put some pictures in so you can see what I'm talking about. But this has five pumpkin plants and three watermelon plants. And what I've been doing is as the vines make their way out of the pool, I'll let them get a little bit of length on them. And then I'll just snake them back around into the pool so that they're not growing all over the ground. And so far that seems to be working. Um, I'm not sure if it's the best thing. I know they're supposed to have a lot of room to grow, but I don't want them snaked all over the yard, so I'm just going to try to keep tucking it back in and see how that works. Um, I did notice that there's what I think might be powdery mildew right here on this leaf and maybe a little bit on some other leaves, so we're going to talk about that because I've heard some other people mention that and I've looked it up to see how we can maybe take care of that, so I'm going to do another video on that. when I was just looking for things to plant and I started some popcorn seeds to see if they'd sprout and sure enough they did so I planted them in the ground really quickly. Uh, they're not doing great. This is the biggest one that I have here and it's been in here for over a couple of months now uh, since the beginning of May, second week of May maybe. Uh, but I didn't prepare the ground so it's trying to compete, to compete with a lot of grass that was here for a long time with lots of thick roots and stuff. Um, and also, I, I really don't think that those were the best corn seeds to use, obviously popcorn seeds for growing, but it did give me the corn bug, and now I'm going to be trying corn in the future with some better seeds. It is cool to see how it's developed, though. Um, even though it's not very tall, I think this might be about as big as it gets. I don't know. I'm just going to let them keep going and see what happens to them, but um, kind of fun to watch. This one's particularly interesting. Um, it was planted at the same time, but um, definitely not as tall. None of these are as tall as they should be, but if you get in close here, you can see what's actually looking like some corn kernels. 
I don't really know what's happening here, but it's not looking good. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. I just wanted to run through all the different things that I've started growing and kind of give you an overview of what's happened so far. But I'm gonna be making some more videos in the coming days and weeks on how I did the process of putting them in pods and germinating them. Um, if any of them needed to be stratified in like the refrigerator or the freezer, I'll show you that. Um, I'm gonna show you the process of turning them upside down when they get to a certain um, size and putting them in the bottles and how to do that. Um, and then we're gonna talk about powdery mildew and um, drainage and um, how to know when things are ready to be harvested and all that good stuff. So um, you can learn along with me because this is a, lear a learning process for me too. So um, I know I'm doing lots of things wrong, but um, I'm also having some success. So um, if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. And um, if you have any questions or anything you wanna see in the future, um, let me know that too. All right, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye.